Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the King Win Aquastar 3000 liquid cooling system. What's included in this package is the main unit, a user's manual, a small bottle of antifreeze water which helps to prevent corrosion and algae from forming, three silica gel tubes, a C-shaped tool for attaching fittings to the tubes, thermal compound, a heat and noise sensor, a bag of screws, 3M double-sided tape, and a multi-function power cable. This end gets plugged into the main unit, and there are a number of connections at the other end to the power supply, an external fan, a noise sensor, and a heat sensor. Since the main unit can be installed outside the case, there is hardware for that. The external components include a multi-function power cable and this expansion slot bracket. This bracket gets installed in the case's expansion slot and both the multi-function power cable and the two silica gel tubes would pass through this bracket. And two water cooler side panels, these go on either side of the main unit in order to cover up the screw holes. The CPU components include a CPU water block, an Intel Pentium 4 socket 478 bracket, an Intel Pentium 4 socket T bracket, an AMD K8 clip, and an Intel Pentium 3 and AMD K7 clip. The GPU components include a GPU water block, NVIDIA and ATI standard clips, and an NVIDIA 6800 bracket. This liquid cooling system is all-inclusive, meaning that everything is inside of it. The fans, the radiator, the reservoir, and the pump. On the outside, it's aluminum. The front is plastic, and it can be installed internally in two five and a quarter inch drive bays or externally. Let's have a closer look at the unit. At the front, to the left, is a blue LED 80 millimeter fan, which is controlled with this fan speed control dial. When it's at its lowest setting, the blue LED fan is dim, as you can see. However, when the fan speed is increased, the blue LED fan becomes brighter. Also notice that the area around the fan control dial changes from blue to red as the speed is increased. At the top right is an LCD function display. This display shows water pump activity, a noise monitor, water reservoir capacity, and the fan speeds for fan one, which is inside of the unit, and an external fan. Also shown here is the temperature, which can be changed from Celsius to Fahrenheit. You can also set a threshold temperature manually by pressing the set button and then just pressing either up to increase the threshold temperature or down. Additionally, the LCD function display background color can be changed by pressing the LCD color button. There are seven color options. Red, green, dark blue, yellow, light blue, pink, purple, and it can be set to automatically cycle through all seven colors. And at the front bottom right, there's a flow indicator which also automatically cycles through all seven colors. At the top, there's a waterproof safety cap. This gets removed when filling the unit with distilled water. At the back of the unit is where the multi-function power cable gets connected. The two tubes know to the direction of flow in and out. Also an 80 millimeter fan. As I mentioned earlier, this CPU water block can be installed on just about any current motherboard. First, insert the CPU, apply some thermal compound, I'm installing this on a socket T, so I'll need to use this particular bracket. Take the bottom part of the bracket and insert it through the motherboard. Next, carefully place the CPU water block on top. 
then slip the top part of the bracket down through the four screw holes and finally fasten the four thumb screws. Tighten them all evenly. This will ensure that the CPU water block will be in good contact with the CPU. The GPU water block is also very versatile and can fit just about any video card on the market. When installing the GPU water block, first remove the existing video card cooler. Remove the existing thermal compound and apply new. With this particular video card, you can leave the RAM sinks on there and just remove the cooler. Some cards you can't do this with. If you cannot, I would recommend getting some RAM sinks for the memory. I'm installing the GPU water block on an NVIDIA 6800 video card, so I'm using this particular bracket. First of all, insert the bracket through the video card. Next, fasten the top part to the GPU water block with this nut. Next, use four thumb screws. Each one of these has a spring onto it and do this in opposite corners like the CPU water block installation tightening all down until it's secure and makes great contact between it and the GPU. Before connecting all the tubes remember to cut them to length. It's recommended to connect the tubes before installation and run the system 12 to 24 hours to ensure there are no leaks. As per the user manual, let me illustrate the direction of flow. Cool water from the main unit will first go into the GPU water block, then from there into the CPU water block, and then back into the main unit as warm water. Inside the main unit is a radiator, and with the help of fans, will cool the water, and this cycle will continue over and over. Finally have a listen to the main unit when the fans are at minimum spin. And maximum. This kit performs very well, has many features, includes a CPU and GPU water block, and is extremely easy to install internally in two five and a quarter inch drive bays or externally. Overall, this is a kick-ass product. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds. This has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also, pop into my website at www.3dgamerman.com. And while you're there, you can go into the forums and register. And remember, registration is completely free. Also, keep in mind, you can find out a lot more on this product in the forums. And as a final note, if you love watching my video reviews, please help support 3dgamatman.com. Until next time, take care.